people are pretty tough. Like they will do some crazy shit if they know it'll actually work. So you can fast for days and days on the salt water and still have good energy to still get your workouts in, especially if you're fat. Fat. Like it's very easy if you're obese. Mm. But let's just say you're mainstream fat guy or fat woman. Mm. Basically you fast as long as you can on that salt water until you feel like death. And then you would refeed and it keeps them so motivated though because they lose weight so damn fast. Like I think right now already, I probably cost Big Pharma like millions of dollars a year already. Like I, the amount of people I get off diabetes meds and shit is just phenomenal, like it's ridiculous. Body, mind, empowerment. Get stronger, faster, smarter, quicker, friendlier, more helpful, more driven. Everything the body needs. Control your mind. Welcome to the Body Mind Empowerment Podcast. I'm your host Seamland and our guest today is Cole Robinson, the snake diet wizard. Cole is the creator of the snake diet that has seen thousands of incredible fat loss transformations with a fasting focused lifestyle. Cole fasts most of the day, lifts heavy weights, runs a Facebook group with over 300,000 members and reveals the bullshit of mainstream fitness advice. A lot of people have been requested for me to get Cole onto the podcast and uh, I eventually did it. So we're going to talk about everything including fasting, carb cycling, ketogenic dieting, exercising and uh, general mindset towards becoming empowered. Yeah, so like you're, you know about fasting. So essentially what I do is I, I basically teach people a prolonged fasting focused lifestyle especially fat people mainly. And then once they get the weight off by not eating for days on end, then once they get down, then I actually help them with like a, you know, an actual eating routine that might be at most a meal a day, maybe 48 hour fast. And you probably know all about fasting, like even cranking up your growth hormone, like all the mm. autophagy, all the health benefits from it, cleaning the system. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's, that's what I like. Um, I, I make a lot of videos about the fasting as well. And, everything included like all the benefits and how to do it so yeah my my, my audience is probably are knowing knowing the story and they're they're pro fasting in a sense they're not they're not biased yeah so a lot of stuff like to be dead honest with you now it almost becomes to the point where i more deal with like psychological issues and fear is a big thing like that a lot of people are just fucking scared of yeah. everything now because they're so brainwashed into the system. Like, you know, they think that fasting will kill you. They think that, you know, they, that everything they think that like a lot of the stuff that the mainstream tells them is going to help them live longer, which it won't. It's like, everything's just money motivated. Mm. So like, I have a lot of people that are just there. It's always fear, like fear of judgment. You know, a lot of the stressors in life that cause people to get unhealthy, you know, like money, chasing the dollar, trying to keep up to your fucking neighbor, and then working a stressful job that like cranks up cortisol, makes you eat, like all that kind of stuff. And that's a lot of the times that's people, like if people want to check out even my Instagram, like, you know, I get some crazy fat loss results. And people, when they know something will work, people are pretty tough. Like they will do some crazy shit if they know it'll actually work. So, hmm. you know, essentially I get people to fast a long, like long periods of time on basically salt water. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and they'll, their body's almost like, almost just like a grizzly bear when a grizzly bear hibernates. People don't understand that, you know, they don't understand that your fucking body fat is just pure fuel and you don't need to fucking eat. And that's another thing too. I was actually having a conversation with somebody today about, um, even just like, like cooking, like it's amazing how people are so brainwashed and so scared thinking that they need to eat at such a high frequency. Like say there's three or four or five or six meals a day hmm. that they're just forcing these meals, yeah. you know? And it's like, well, I, I don't really need to eat, but I better, I got to cook something. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's, yeah. it's just unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, it's like my metabolism is gonna slow down, and uh, how 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 do I not eat? <laughs> That's uh, like a really yeah, that fuck the metabolism thing is. Just, <laughs> people are like, you know, <laughs> like it's like you're fucking five hundred pounds, fatty. Like your fucking metabolism is already fucked. Yeah, and they're trying, you know, and like people are they dwell so much on 
on a lot of stuff. Example, here's a good one. Even today I was coaching a girl and she went and got some blood tests done. And this girl's probably lost like 40 pounds and she hasn't had any blood tests done forever, right? <laughs> and she feels like 20,000 times better than she did 40 pounds ago. But she goes and gets blood tests done and according to their range, her thyroid hormone, the, I think it was the T3 hormone is like a little bit low. Hmm. It's like, and I'm like, how do you feel? And she's like, great compared to before. So I'm like, who fucking cares? Yeah. And that's what people will dwell on. And then that leads them to buying meds off the system. And like, it's un, it's crazy how some of the ranges, even when you talk about stuff that a lot of people might be able to relate to like blood sugar, hmm. It's crazy. I don't know what it's like where you go ahead. Yeah, like a blood sugar is a good example that you should feel you should be hypoglycemic when you're fasting, but you you don't feel tired or you don't feel uh, oh, hypoglycemic. Yeah, you're yeah. Actually lower than that, and you're still able to function perfectly. Well, exactly. We could lace into this like crazy. So, for starters, people do not have of any fucking clue how low their blood sugar should actually run. Yeah. In fact, if I'm not mistaken. No, don't quote me on this, but they might have changed it. But basically the range in where I live in Alberta, Canada, if you went to the doctor's office and they pulled out their blood test sheets, the range of a healthy blood sugar, blood glucose would be between 3.3 and 6 millimoles per liter. So 3.3 in milligrams per deciliter is right around 60. And 6, basically you times, by about, you times it by about 18. So even at times, so basically between 60 and about 100, maybe 110 milligrams per deciliter. And like, if you're pulling blood sugar numbers higher than five, you're not healthy. Yeah. And they're trying to make it look like you're okay. That's like, you're fine. You're under six. Like you're already getting to the point where you got a fatty liver and you're basically a diabetic. If you're, if your blood sugar is always over five, Yeah. like somebody like you or me, you know, like I've done these experiments. This is what I do. I fucking self-experiment to find the truth. I've done experiments where I literally ate as much sugar as I could in an hour. And my blood sugar went up to 10. Wow. And I recovered back to 4.4, like, you know, four and a half ish and mm. inside of an hour. Mm. Like that's healthy. Okay. It's not about what your blood sugar is at necessarily. Like, you know, a lot of the people that I get fasting, um, let's say it's like a type two diabetic. So basically a type two diabetic is completely fuck all. It's just, you're a fucking fat ass and you need to stop eating and heal your liver and your endocrine system's all fucked up. So you get somebody that's like, say 300 pounds, they start fasting and then their blood sugar is rocking and rolling like sky high. They're on like metformin. They're on like all the other type two diabetes meds. Mm -hmm. They start fasting, blood sugar clears after usually with somebody that's decently healthy it'll clear about after 48 hours or less but with these people it's really high so sometimes it takes like a couple two three four days for them to get into ketosis right yeah. but so anyway what happens is their blood sugar gets down but they haven't healed yet so you want to keep the blood sugar as low as you can obviously on their refeeds if they're refeeding every three four five six seven days you want your refeeds to basically be zero carb if possible because then See, because they still haven't healed. So if they take on some blood, some sugar, it'll spike the shit out of it, right? Mm -hmm. So that's how you know if somebody's actually healthy. It's not about them having a low blood sugar in the moment because they're on a fast per se. It's about the recovery time. Mm -hmm. And the, that is a real good sign of like true health when it comes to that stuff and it comes to like liver health. Mm -hmm. Now, a guy like you, you've probably done some experiments for sure with this. But if you're really healthy and you're not overweight and, you know, you're not rocking like some sort of a body fat percentage, it's sky high. Um, essentially, your blood sugar, when you're, say, fasted 12 hours, so you're not in ketosis, let's say, like, let's say fasted but not in ketosis, you should be like in the fours. If you're higher than five, if you're in, like getting up close to six, you got fucking work to do. Like you need to start fasting and heal. And if you're in ketosis, your blood sugar should be down in the threes. Okay. Like those are good numbers. And that's, so the point was, is we're talking about these fucking idiot doctors who don't know anything about the endocrine system themselves. They're all fucking fat. 
And there, as soon as the person goes to the doctor, because the people are, you know, they take the doctor's word hospital and they don't know fuck all. And then all of a sudden they're walking out of there buying like hundreds and thousands of dollars worth of diabetes meds for absolutely no reason whatsoever. Go consult your local drug dealing doctor and make sure it's okay. Yeah, it's so true. Um, the medical medical community is a huge pyramid scheme almost. And uh, they oh, prescribe. Exactly. The, test, the tests themselves are hu hugely expensive and the meds and uh, therapies and everything. Yeah, it's quite, quite uh, crazy. And like you, and even like, you know, my personality, and this is the thing that, you know, it's, it's no one talks truth because God forbid, even if they're a good doctor, let's say they were a good doctor and knew the truth. They can't tell the fat sick person that it's as simple as not fucking eating and going on like a strict zero carb, basically refeeding routine until they're healed because they'll lose their job. Mm. Yeah. You know, they'll fucking lose their goddamn job. And that is why guys like me, you know, that help people for free. And, you know, I live like this very minimalistic lifestyle. Nobody can't, they can't fuck with me. So I can basically preach whatever I want. And that's the trade off. I can say whatever I want. And I just have nobody to tell me what to do. And that's why I get such good results. You know, like I've had people, I had one girl lose 200 pounds in a year. Yeah. And like she, you know, like she didn't pay a dime. She didn't spend any money on food. She was eating like she even did one fast that was thirty days long on the salt water. Wow. You know, so like if any of your viewers are interested, like I don't want to get into the like the snake juice. Like you know, that's what it kind of was just a joke. That's what it started becoming called back in the day. Essentially, the story was what first happened. I started fasting because I got sick. I used to be a fitness trainer. And I got sick and fucking tired of training a lot of girls, actually, that all had massive eating addictions. And then I just get angry because it's like, oh, you're training good. They're doing good. You know, and this is back when I was still preaching like multiple meal a day bullshit. But they couldn't stick to it. They couldn't adhere to that because you can't beat a food addiction with a high eating frequency. So then I just got sick of training because I didn't see the results I'd like to. Like, especially sometimes you'd see good conditioning results a lot of times but you wouldn't see the weight loss results. And that's why 99% of the public's even hiring a trainer. So then I started, I challenged one girl to a fast and one thing led to another. And that's when I started fasting and I just seen crazy results. And then basically I did, I was, I was screwing around with some, you know, 48s and 72 hour fasts, but I did do the first ones on water. And that's when I figured out the salt, because if you're like, trying to train hard like say yourself somebody that's sedentary that's quite fat can go a little longer without getting taxed on electrolyte like sodium and potassium specifically well i got to about day three and i went to do some deadlifts at the gym one day and i basically was almost fainting between each set so i knew that that was my limit and then i was doing some experiments with another guy we were screwing around with salt to try to actually kick water and i had him eating on 48s and it was just, it's just crazy experimentation and like, you know, having a set of fucking balls to actually try sit, try shit that led me to doing an eight day fast on the salt water mix. And that's when I figured it out. That's when I'm like, okay, you can fast for days and days on the salt water and still have good energy to still get your workouts in, especially if you're fat. Like it's very easy if you're obese because you just got so much electrolyte entrained in your body fat. Like people just, don't understand that even when you buy, like if you go back to the hunter gatherer times, you know, the fat has the most nutrition in it versus the muscle meat, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's the fat that the Eskimos really wanted, you know, the fat. Like I think I seen you do a talk with a lady that was doing a carnivore eating routine. Mm -hmm. I watched one of your videos mm -hmm. and yeah. you know quite a bit about that stuff, right? Like, you know, like I've been getting a lot of people that I coach, essentially the fasting aspects, number one, and number two, I'll have them on zero carb carnivore, fairly strict carnivore. They might still eat like a little bit of butter and things, but that is the best protocol I'd say on the face of the planet is going to be a, a, a hardcore fasting routine. If you're fat, like at least 72 hour fast between refeeds and then strict carnivore and keep the refeeds at like maybe 500 grams of food, make sure you're getting in your salts and you will heal everything. 
Yeah. I got a guy right now that's, that's got MS and I, like the results are insane. Like two weeks, he had all his feeling back in his feet and his hands. And like, he had no grip strength. Like he is frail. He's 40 years old. Like, uh, like, you know, like 140 pounds soaking wet kind of guy, like just really frail. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, he's, he walks, he has a bad way when he walks and I got him basically eating, I cut all the, all the carbs, zero carb, uh, him we're doing a meal a day because he's like he's underweight right so i got him i want to try to gain some weight i'd like to maybe when he gets really healed up i'd get him to eat some carbs and because i know you can gain weight like it, carbs are kind of a uh, you, you probably know about this stuff um like the way i eat carbs is i never eat carbs every day mm -hmm. like i do a carb loading routine right i don't carb up every day i have either a carb day that is basically super low fat, you know, hit my protein count and a pile of starch, maybe a little bit of fruit. And all the other days are just straight zero carb. Mm. Yeah, because it's going to maintain like a more stable blood sugar and insulin sensitivity. And you, yeah, the only time you would want to consume carbs is when you've exercised and your muscle glycogen is depleted. Like and it, at any other times, it's going to make basically you know, promote more fat storage and uh, insulin resistance and everything like that. So yeah, exactly. most, people don't, most it's actually yeah, quite bizarre to prescribe people to eat high carb, even if they're like sedentary or if they're obese, it doesn't make sense from a, like a physiological perspective. And but you know where it does make sense? In their fucking wallet. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, look at the shit they sell you. That's yeah. Like, you know what's crazy? Like, kale is more expensive than fucking steak. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> like, it's fucking, this, this fucking vegan agenda, this vegan agenda is literally making foods that you should eat in moderation at best yeah. more expensive than fucking meat. Yeah. Like, truth be told, I fucking hope you got some vegan followers for me to piss off. I fucking hate <laughs> veganism. Truth yeah. be told, you will be a healthier human being by a hundred times if you ate strictly carnivore with a good, strong fasting routine, so say if you're lean, you're eating a meal a day, fucking factory farmed the worst quality fucking meat on the planet. You will still be healthier on that diet than you were eating a fucking vegan diet. Mm. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Yeah. Like the... Like the, the go the, ahead. You know, yeah, I, I really think yeah like the humans are kind of evolved to eat meat and we we our digestive system is more prone to digest uh you know these animal products rather than uh, plant products but yeah at the same time some plant products also have their own uh benefit in some in some aspects and uh like full on carnivore for the rest of a life probably isn't ideal and that's why you right that's, right that's why you cycle it in between and uh, right incorporate it yeah i actually made a video about that actually after i made i made a video about hormesis and uh, I think you actually made a pretty good video about hormesis too. Mm, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I made it first like a year ago or something. And yeah. Then, and then I republished it uh, this time. <laughs> yeah. So like I did a video like not too long ago just talking about hormesis. And the reason that came up was exactly because of what you just said. Because I knew, see, these strict carnivore people that are all over the internet now, mm. just like what you just said. The problem is, is it will create a situation of hypersensitivity mm. because if you ate, because like nobody's allergic to meat. Okay. But like allergens are not even allergens or like, you know, your phytonutrients and everything. And like lots of like say plants, it, like I, I always make the point that plants are like medication. Okay. And so a little bit of something that your body has to like, you know, put in a little effort is not bad like that's that whole hormesis aspect but if you go if you're not adapted and you go past that plateau it's like detrimental hmm. yeah it's it's so true like uh the, the what i see or what i'm afraid of is that there are a lot of people who are jumping on the carnivore bandwagon at the moment even though they don't have any sensitivities towards vegetables or plants and they may actually cause themselves some issues in the future right. just because of being so uh, restrictive yeah, and that's the thing, because even if you go back to, like, what was it, the Inuit, you know, they'd still have some berries yeah. and such on, you know, they'd have that for at least, uh, at least, like, a few weeks out of the year, right? Mm. So, they'd, they'd be able to at least get a little bit of that, hor like, that hormetic effect. 
and it's it's the same with everything and this is that's how you build immune we we evolved through hormesis like that's how we evolved that's how we're so goddamn tough exactly. so like and i agree like going zero carb carnivore especially with the fasting that's perfect for people that are really fucked up if they got stomach issues from you know drinking way too much coffee or taking piles of antibiotics to, that's going to be the easiest way to heal the stomach but once they start feeling better they can incorporate tiny amounts of some of these plants and it's not going to be a bad thing just don't go like you know eating a massive bowl of freaking salad or vegetables in one shot it's all about that frequency right they just got to get it in in tiny amounts maybe every couple of days to develop that like that immunity to it essentially or like develop uh what's the word i'm looking for there just a tolerance to it right yeah yeah it's so true yeah and uh, and also like uh there are also very many health benefits and longevity benefits to these uh plant products as well and especially the phytonutrients and uh, yeah and these other sulforaphane and things like that they have like a longevity boosting effect so if you want to kind of optimize your health then you would want to incorporate them in, in uh, something exactly and like you know there's and that's why um that's kind of what motivated me to make that video about hormesis because you know, all these carnivore people that are jumping on the carnivore bandwagon, like there's no doubt it's fucking veganism's a goddamn joke because your teeth will fucking fall out of your goddamn head after six years when you rotted your teeth out. Like, a anyway, I don't even want to go down that road this second. But, but so these carnivore people, you know, they, they get that really, they get those awesome health benefits right away. It works quick, but like you say, you're 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 hurting yourself a little bit in the long run as far as how how um um adaptable you are yeah how adaptable you're going to be exactly that's the word how adaptable because you're not bringing in some other stuff in your diet and it doesn't even have to be much like you could essentially eat basically almost like a very low carb routine all the time which is what i would recommend for almost everybody if they're like your regular sedentary basic sedentary person the only people that would really benefit off carb loads would be guys that are like actually training quite hard. Yeah, yeah, it's so true. The snake diet is a prolonged fasting focused lifestyle combined with proactive eating. And fasting is also another one of those things that I think everyone should follow. <laughs> no matter everybody should fast. No, no matter no matter who they are or what. Uh, yeah, fasting's uh, fa fasting's a blanket. Yeah, fasting's. Pretty much you can cover everybody with the fasting aspect. There's no end. You can cover everybody with fasting and you can cover everybody with meat. Mm, yeah, that's true. Okay, there's not one human being on the planet that shouldn't be eating meat. And that's like, you know, that's, that's the whole thing. And that's another to, rabbit hole. <laughs> well, exactly. And that's the thing about too, just to go back when you're talking about, like we were talking about the carb loading with the glycogen, just so people can understand that. Like I've done experiments where I carb loaded, like the body, depending how big you are, you'll usually hold maybe like a guy in my or your size, you'll hold like maybe four to 500 grams of glycogen. Your liver will usually hold like about a hundred grams and then the muscles will hold maybe three to 400. Obviously less when you're smaller, but I've actually done experiments where I fasted. So I carb loaded like crazy and then went on zero food and I still had some extremely explosive energy on day five. Mm. And I wasn't getting flat yet. Like, you know, when you really feel, but, but I also was very um, structured in my training. So I only like touched, like I did pretty much just heavy, heavy lifting, but very low volume for the days leading up to the fifth day. And so then I didn't tax all the glycogen out of my system. But if I would have did like a big burnout workout, it would have like kind of whooped me and I probably would have needed to get yeah. like carb load like within three or four days. But if you're really smart about it, it works very well. If you load up, if, especially if you're doing like a strength routine, if you're going from like a, a volume block to like more of a strength block, it works good. You can carb up just on the weekend and you can basically stretch those carbs over five, six days. And the coolest part is the point I was going to get to is contrary to popular belief you can burn body fat like crazy and build muscle mm. because it, it allows you to still have that glycogen load and you know there's some people on the internet now they're talking about testosterone with the carnivore diet i don't give a fuck what they say soon as you carb up you definitely feel it 
you For feel sure. this spike in metabolism and your testosterone goes way up. There's no fucking way you're getting the testosterone mm. gains from eating zero carb carnivore. Yeah, you're, and also you're like your thyroid and everything else will also ramp up just because you've, you've been depleted. And yeah. uh, that aspect of you, you're going to gain like a bigger boost from less carbohydrates just because you come from oh, exactly. a lower state. Whereas if you were to stay high carb all the time, then you wouldn't gain a big, bigger of a boost because you, you, you're constantly, you know, sensitized to the carb. Exactly. And that brings up a good point, actually, with like insulin sensitivity, because when I carb load, like, you know how insulin is like a no-no, you know, it technically in the mainstream it is a no-no for most people because they're always spiking it and it makes you store fat like crazy. You tax the shit out of your pancreas, et cetera, et cetera. But when you you know, starve your body of carbs for days on end and you have a good feel for where you're at and then you carb load, you like want that insulin through the roof yeah. because you just pound the nutrients into your body and you can like, when I eat, like when I carb up, like I literally start sweating. <laughs> like it's, I, I kind of go from like kind of flat, like because I maybe haven't eaten carbs for three, four days, just zero carb. And then I carb up hard, like I'll eat like about 400 grams. And I like just start sweating. Yeah. Like it's because your body, it's just so efficient. You can just feel how healthy it is to do that. Yeah, for sure. Like, uh, you know, yeah, like I've done the cyclical keto diet in the past as well. And yeah, those are you, you eat like a low carb keto for like a week and then you have a big carb load. And uh, the next day you can still, you know, lose weight and you're going to still feel leaner just because you're so, you're going to metabolize the carbs so fastly and it's not going to be like any, any difference even. Exactly. And the other coolest thing that people, a lot of people don't understand is that when you got that massive glycogen load, so like, let's say I load up on carbs tonight, which I actually am. Um, tomorrow night, I won't be in ketosis. Okay. So tomorrow night, I'm going to eat like basically zero carb. I'll probably just eat like steak and eggs or something like that. And, but by the next evening, I will actually be in ketosis and I'll still have like two or 300 grams of glycogen. Mm. So what it allow, what it, your body's extremely evolved. Like people just don't understand this dual fuel aspect. So what would happen is say if I was going to do some like aerobic work, like let's just say I was going to go for like a walk, right? And I'm in ketosis and I'm still carved up. I will be burning like nothing but body fat, like 90% body fat during that walk, right? But then if I went and out into the soccer field during that walk and I want to do a couple hundred meter sprints, that glycogen's there to give you like superpowers on those sprints. Yeah. It's yeah. pretty amazing stuff. Yeah, like it's exactly like when you're doing low intensity stuff, then, you're, then uh, you don't actually tap into the muscle glycogen. Exactly. And you're burning only like uh, liver glycogen and uh, the body fat. Exactly. That's crazy. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty cool how that works. And like, so like a lot of people that I coach, the ones that are actually, you know, down to where they're getting lean, uh, this is the kind of routine I'll get them on. And I'll have them doing, you know, I don't know if we want to talk too much about exercise. We could a bit, but, you know, I, especially if it's more of a bodybuilding routine, a lot of them I'll have them on like an upper lower split where they'll train upper lower and try to go six times a week and with one day off and they'll carb load on the weekend. Mm -hmm. And that's one routine. I, I really like that upper lower split. Um, I get good results from that. But then what I do is I'll do a block. And when I start to maybe plateau on the upper lower split, then I'll go to a strength block. And that's where I'll do like full body with really heavy weights, very low volume. And I'll try to get in as much as I can to keep the frequency way up. Because the, the, the best way to train strength is going to be to keep that frequency sky high, right? Mm -hmm. You know, just, you know, like almost like, like say bench pressing, like say you train a volume block where you put some muscle, you know, on the muscles that you work the bench press on. Well, then what you would do is you would go into a strength block and then I would just work the movement and I'd try to bench almost every day of the week, but it almost feels like I didn't even do anything when I leave the gym. Mm -hmm. Right. But yeah, that's pretty much how I train people with the diet. Like I'll get them to do a carb load routine and not all of them though. Right. They got to train pretty damn hard. Like I'm not going to get, somebody that's kind of, you know, training aerobic, like there's one girl that I'm coaching right now and she's probably got about 20 pounds to cut and we'll probably cut all 20 pounds in the month. And I got her eating like on 48s because she runs about four times a week for training for this marathon. So with her, she's got some body fat 
and she's not doing any anaerobic work where she's going to need a bunch of muscle glycogen stored up. So I pretty much got her basically on a zero carb routine on the refeeds. And the other cool thing, like, you know, when you're doing the keto carb cycling, that's the same idea. But then the best part of this whole thing is when you put the fasting in there, then you got something that's really special. Yeah. Because now you got a situation where you're going zero carb on your zero carb days, plus you're fasting all day, eating like maybe a meal a day. And then what you're doing when you fast, you're just making yourself even more sensitive to obviously that little bit of a insulin spike, but you're mainly, you're actually creating a situation where you're going to burn way more body fat. Yeah, yeah that's true. So what, what would, let's maybe like talk about like what, what types of uh, fasting routines would you prescribe to different people? Let's say someone who is, uh, let's start off yeah, like some from like a first transition of their actually overweight and how, okay. would, how are they going to transition over to becoming lean and what would they do then with fasting? Okay. So, so the way I like to coach people is like, obviously you kind of know my stuff, like really aggressive at the start. Right. So right off the bat, I like people to do a 72 hour fast right off the bat on the salt water. The probably the most important part of that phase there is, is that that's to build confidence because people, you got to remember people still think fasting is going to fucking kill them. So then I prove to them it doesn't. Okay, so I get them to do 72 hours, and then if they feel good at 72 hours, a lot of people do. They feel great because now they've drained all their liver glycogen. They went through like that, you know, that liver cycle, and now they're basically just burning straight body fat, and they feel really good, especially if they're sedentary. They'll feel great. Hmm. And then if they feel good at 72 hours, 96 hours. If they feel good at that, we'll just keep going, and then they'll refeed on like a zero-carb small refeed, almost like a little pit stop. And that's how I coach the obese people, the mainstream obese people. Now I can get into how I coach like a fat power lifter. It's a little different. Mm -hmm. But let's just say you're mainstream fat guy or fat woman. Mm. Basically, you fast as long as you can on that salt water and until you feel like death. And then you would refeed. And it keeps them so motivated, though, because they lose weight so damn fast. Mm. Like they lose crazy, like. Your average obese woman, if she's pushing it, so let's say even like, let's say not even crazy aggressive. Let's say I got her on 72 hour fast. So that'd be a routine. Okay. Even the minimum that I'd want a really fat person on would be a 72 hour fasting routine with at most like 500 calorie refeeds, zero carb. Yeah. And that routine is going to chop 20 pounds minimum off any girl in a month. Okay, maybe, and probably even more with a guy if he follows that. But now, if they got like that willpower and they're really motivated, they don't have to do 72 hour fast. You know, I got shit. I had a guy that lost, he's down like 160 pounds since. Oh man, he's down. I think he's lost about 160 in maybe nine months or what was it? Like not long. Yeah. And he was doing long fasts. It was less than that. Shit. I can't remember. If you go on my Instagram, his name is uh, Lawrence. And so he was 400 pounds at one point. Now he's down to about 240. But he would do like seven day fast, you know. And, and as long as you weren't taxing yourself in the gym with a bunch of like, you know, high volume uh, resistance work, a lot of people could do it quite easy. Like your regular average, you know, woman that's fat, that doesn't exercise, fuck all can easily fast like days on end like you know so that's how i do it so basically fast as long as you can 72 hours minimum to get some really good results because truth be told like fat women they have like basically the same maintenance calorie count as a house cat <laughs> like, like i'm not even kidding I mean, i'm not kidding you like if you i have like i have so much experience with calories if you have a like a fat lady eating one meal a day, 500 calories with carbs, she won't lose shit. If she loses weight, it'll be moderate and it won't be enough to keep her motivated and she'll relapse. Yeah, and she'll actually lose muscle because of high carb and not being... Yeah, and now that's right about the gray area because if you're eating a meal a day, you, it, it's, it, you will, it's not optimal. It's not optimal, you're exactly right. Now, if you're eating carbs on 48s or 72s, not like I've done it. Eh? I, cut, I cut about 12 pounds on a meal a day, 
high carb routine and I didn't lose any muscle at all. Like I had all the DEXA scans and everything to prove it. But now that was a tight window too, right? Like, and I was also, there's now the only way if you do like big cuts, like let's say you're a male and your maintenance calories, like say for you, let's just say you're like around 3000 or so let's just say you're around 3000 a day with your exercise. If you tried to do a hardcore cut on a meal a day routine, eating carbs, let's say a hardcore cut being like, you know, getting down to that 1800 calorie mark, there you have a risk of losing some muscle. Yeah. But if you keep it like at four or 500 calorie deficit on carbs, one meal a day, you won't lose nothing. But who the hell's got the willpower for that? Like I can do it, you can do it, but the fat lady can't do that one. Right. That's a freaking, that's a pretty advanced routine. That's like something I'd have like a, on a, a structured power lifter on that routine. Like some guy that's like a 500 pound bench presser and we're trying to cut him as slowly as we can while still keeping him carved up like crazy. But at that point, we would just put them on a carb loading routine anyway. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Where we, sure. right? So, but you're right. The right, you're exactly right, though. You're you want to really be careful of that, and that's why I always cut people, because why would they need carbs? Like seriously, yeah. they don't need any fucking carbs. For sure. Right. So, but yeah. So then you get down. I think you were mentioning something there. So then once you get lean, so let's say we cut all the fat off the fat lady. Now she's down to where she's getting fairly lean. At that point, when she's probably like maybe, when it starts getting difficult, because it will start getting difficult when you start getting, you know, when you got that last 10 pounds to cut, those 72 hour fasts will start to actually get hard. And then that's when I cut it down to 48, maybe do those for a couple of weeks, maybe a week and a half, lose that last bit of weight, then I put them on 24s, and then maybe throw a 48 in once a week just for shits and giggles on the weekend. And then at that point, if they decide they're going to go to the gym and start training, then we might screw around and give them like one carb up day a week. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah so sure. that's kind of the idea. So, and then now with the, like with an athlete that's overweight, like I say, it's different. That's where that carb loading routine works so good. I'd have them definitely not doing any more than 24 hour fast, especially if they're really high level. And I'd have them carb loading usually on the weekend and on Wednesday night. That's usually enough because that way, so the, the trick is of that routine is you carb up on the weekend and then you got Monday where you're zero carb and you're not quite in ketosis yet by Monday night you're getting there. But then on Tuesday morning, you're definitely in ketosis. So if you wanted to cut weight, the best day to pull calories because of what you said before, because you don't really want to cut on carbs, like I never cut on carbs, but like I said, you could if the deficit's small. But that Tuesday, what you'd do is you'd pull the calories back like crazy because you're in ketosis. It's a zero carb refeed day. You could cut back the calories like crazy. You could even just hit your protein count and cut the fat right back that day. Mm -hmm. And that, so you'd have like two days a week there where you're kind of getting aggressive with the cutting for somebody that wants to cut really slow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, like that's a that's a really cool, cool, good point that you mentioned, and especially with the refeeds or, or if you're trying to lose weight as well with the smaller refeeds, because let's say the goals of your this longer fast would be to go into ketosis and to only get enough of the essential fat acids and essential amino acids just to maintain <clears throat> the muscle, right. and uh, you, for that you don't need to be eating a bunch of calories. You don't need to be eating like two thousand calories. You can safely get like yeah. 500 to 1,000 calories with like uh, mostly some, some protein that has exactly. a, a little bit of fat and that's like the meat is a good option for that. And yeah, it's like it's almost like now if people would be willing to eat raw meat, like I find optimally if people had the nerve to do this, if somebody was really fat, I would probably only refeed them on raw liver, seriously. Because then the raw liver is fairly low in calories because it's not very, like, it's not very fatty, mm -hmm. but it's got tons of cholesterol, which is awesome. Yeah. Contrary to popular belief, you want your <laughs> cholesterol through the, through the fucking roof. <laughs> yeah. And so you got, so like liver is perfect, right? Yeah. And that's the whole idea because then you can still hit their pro like you can still hit a decent protein count, low calorie, stay in ketosis, refeeding on raw liver, almost perfect. Mm. Yeah, like and then you're getting some, go ahead. 
Yeah, the, like liver is the number one most nutrient dense food yeah. on the planet, but practically. And uh, yeah, like if, if you had, if you wanted to cut hard and fast, raw liver is perfect. Like if you did, yeah. even somebody that was fairly high performance, what I would do is they could even carb load on the weekend. And if they're smart, they could stretch their carbs out for probably a good, you know, four or five days. They might have maybe one day at the end of the week or two days where they're a little bit lethargic, but then you would just cut on liver. It's perfect. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But that's, go ahead. The liver is going to give the micronutrients and- uh, Oh yeah, man, it's perfect. And and (laughs) that's actually like one of the reasons why people aren't feeling satiated or the reason they get hungry in the first place is they're first of all, not getting enough protein and then they're not not getting enough of the essential minerals as well. You know, it's actually funny you bring that up. Because the first time I ate raw liver, it, the calorie count wasn't very high. I ate about 600 grams. And you're looking at like a similar protein count to like, you know, just basically a steak. Mm. But holy shit, was I full. Because <laughs> it's so rich. Yeah. It's so rich. I was like, it was like, I was just full off a 600 gram chunk of liver. And I hadn't even ate any other food, which is like no food for me because like I'm a fucking pig. Like I can eat a lot of food. <laughs> and it was, it was very rich. Like it's almost perfect if people have the balls to eat, to fast as long as they can and refeed on raw liver. Mm -hmm. It's almost, and then, and then if they are a little low on salt, they drink some of the snake juice. Well, obviously they drink the snake juice during the fasting time. We haven't really hit on dry fasting yet, but there's also a place for that. Yeah. Before we do that, I want to mention over that the, the, the liver would actually fit perfectly with these extended fasts because. Oh yeah. Like it's, it's not, it's, you know, it's still high in vitamin A. And uh, if you get too much vitamin A, then you actually cause like vitamin A toxicity. And so, yeah, like if you cycle it, if you have the liver only like within. Oh yeah. Like you're never going to kill yourself. You're never going to. Perfect. Like you're never going to get toxic either. Yeah. You're never going to kill yourself on one big liver load a week. Right. You know, you can eat like two pounds of liver every Wednesday. Right. (laughs) Yeah, and like these people, like if you can do that, like that's the only. And obviously, you got some of your other protein sources, like eggs, eggs, yolk, egg yolks, and yeah, that that's the best way to lose weight, man. Like, fast as long as you can, and crank that liver up. Eat liver and and drink raw eggs. Like, there's a little bit of argument too with egg whites and things about the protein bioavailability, bioavailability and such. But a lot of times, I just like drinking the raw eggs anyway because mm. they're just. Cause I'm just lazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like Rocky. So. Get it like Rocky. And raw eggs, man. If you can't drink raw eggs, you're a fucking pussy. It won't hurt you. Just get good fucking sources. Do your fucking research. There was one other thing I was going to say about, we were talking just before we go to the next thing there. Um, we we're talking about that carb loading. Oh yeah. And that's the other thing too. Obviously when you're loading the carbs up, on those days, I'm very, like, it's very, a very dry load, not dry water wise. I get lots of water in, but like no fat, like I keep the fat at a minimum because yeah. contra because a lot of people, the keto police, they, they don't understand protein because the way it actually works is, um, obviously carbs, like starch or glucose will spike the shit out of your insulin, but protein mixed with the, the, the carbs will spike the More. shit up your insulin. Yeah. But the protein on its own, when your blood sugar, and if your blood sugar is not elevated, protein won't do shit to your, to your insulin. Yeah. It's gonna if, have- as long as your sugar, and that's where those, and that is where a lot of these keto people get so scared because that mainstream keto macros, you know, what is it like, you know, 5% protein kind yeah. of thing or 10%, like something really low, yeah. that is trash. Because all of these people, a lot of them are just scared because they don't fast. As soon as you fast, you can get a lot more loose with your macros as well. For sure. Like I did an experiment like where I ate basically two packs of bacon every night and two kilograms of cucumbers. And if you looked at the carb count on the cucumbers, I was like over 100 grams. And then the next day I would dry fast all day, train my ass off, just sweating like a pig. And by that night, before I started my next dinner, I was pissing ketones like dark. Hmm. That's with dry fasting. Well, that's a whole nother chat we can have here because yeah. dry fasting, there's no doubt about it. It is definitely more aggressive if you are trying to 
if you want to like go down that road and lose weight even quicker. But the problem is, is you can only drive fast so long. So if you're one of those real hardcores that's going to like try to fast for like two weeks straight, I actually have people cycle between the two. You know, they'll drink snake juice for like maybe uh, whatever, how many days in a row, but then they'll drive fast as long as they can. And then once the dry fasting becomes almost unbearable, they'll just hydrate on snake juice for as many days as it takes to get their marbles back. And then they'll just go back into a dry fast again. Mm -hmm. Can you, can so you briefly go, go over like what's the jig, snake juice and uh, how did, what's the ingredients? Okay, so basically all snake juice is is sodium chloride. So like some sort of good quality Himalayan pink salt works fine or even some of these good sea salts. It's just salt, so sodium, sodium source. And then the other main ingredient is potassium chloride. Mm -hmm. So back in the day, when I first started doing this, I used to like, like now I guess I can talk about how I used to mix it up. I used to actually put one teaspoon of sodium chloride, whatever salt source it was per one liter of water. And then I'd use one teaspoon of potassium chloride, which would be in like the sources of like no salt, salt free, um, there's a million brands of that stuff yeah, yeah, and that's how I'd mix it. And that, I got that originally just from like the mainstream RDAs, just bulk, you know, I, the RDA for potassium was about 4,700 a day. So, crazy. so I just kind of screwed with it and it worked pretty good. But then I actually had changed it where I, I lightened up the dosage a little bit because a lot of people still use my old, my old mixture and it works great actually. And, but some people, when they first start fasting, their bodies will kick, like they'll detox pretty hard. And then they might get some diarrhea and not just from the salt, but just from other things. And so then I messed around with uh, knocking back those. So I knocked it back instead of one and one and one, like one liter of water with those one teaspoon of each of those salts. I went one liter of water or like, let's say two liters of water with one teaspoon of potassium chloride half a teaspoon of sodium chloride and one teaspoon of baking soda. Mm. So the reason I did that was because you still got the same amount of sodium with the baking soda, except you need twice as much baking soda as you do sodium chloride. Mm -hmm. And so I half, I basically half right. the potassium and half the sodium. And I experimented with that. I did a couple like 72 hour fast with some pretty hard training and it felt good. So I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, this is okay. If I can cut it back, it'd be even better for some people. But I added the baking soda in because the baking soda, when you're doing these long fasts, it really keeps the pH up in your urine and in your kidneys. Because mm -hmm. your kidneys, after a while, you're not going to really hurt them, but they'll get hot. Like I, I like to use that word hot. It's like they get quite acidic because you're in such a deep state of ketosis for so long. But it's more to do with like the dry fat because what happens, it's not even about the acidity hurting your kidneys, but what happens is build up from the past, like all the minerals that build up in your kidneys just from bad diet and shit. And like all the calcium and oxalates that fuck shit up from all the greens everyone eats. What happens is you're, when you, especially when you start dry fasting, you will kick stones. Mm. It doesn't happen too often, but what people do is I get them to like be preventative about it. And they'll be drinking this new snake juice recipe and they'll be knocking back the baking soda with it. Where before I used to have the baking soda separate. And what it'll do is it'll like get, like I'm, this works so good. Like baking soda works so damn good yeah. that I've had people like after like four or five days of fasting, their backs are just killing them. Like, you know, kidney pain, mm -hmm. not because they're, they're in any danger, but because they might, they're, they're, they're getting like some sediment breaking loose yeah. and that, that baking soda will like break those stones down like that. Yeah. And like the pain will instantly go away. So that was something that I, because I had it happen. So what happened to me was my very first somewhat long dry fast. I went five days way back in the day. That was my first long one, which might've been my hardest one to this day because I was really lean going into it. Like I was like 8% body fat going into this dry fast. And it was just, it was pretty radical. I got down to like 156, could hardly walk. Like, fuck. How long, was that? How long was that? That was probably, that was a five day hard dry fast. That was probably about a year and a half ago. Wow. That's crazy. Or so. <laughs> but it was because I was so light. Like I've done, I've done a seven day dry fast, like hard, but I was also a lot heavier. I was like 190 going into that one.
Yeah, if you're if you're heavier or if you have more fat, then it's like a more buffer zone. <laughs> oh, exactly. Especially yeah, because your body's got all that. Because as soon as you get in a deep, dry, fasted state, your body starts producing that metabolic water, and you got like yeah. water for days. It's like you're a camel. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's you know, so and it's actually really interesting how when you're really fat and your body holds water, I'll actually use like a hard dry fasting technique to like get people like water adapted. Kind of like how you get fat adapted really yeah. well when you're when you're like always in ketosis. It's almost like that. You get water adapted and then what's that? Sorry? It's like the next level of, of fat adaption. Yeah. And so what happens, it's just like when you are in ketosis all the time, like me, I'll bounce back and forth really easy, right? It's same with dry fasting. It's like once my body senses that it, it's actually low on like exogenous water, you could say, mm -hmm. it'll like bounce into water to like fat burning mode even quicker to get the water. It's really interesting. And so then sometimes people on their very first hard dry fast, they'll get like the nastiest headaches. And that's what happened to me at 48 hours. My very first one, I like thought I was going to fucking die. Like my head was just pounding. Mm -hmm. And then the next day I was good. Like at 72, I was fine. Like after the 48 hours and it was because my body had to make that shift. Almost like when you go through that hunger phase, when your liver glycogen's emptying, when you get into ketosis. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It's like very interesting. Go ahead. Initial shift, like of our initial barrier. And once you cross it, then your body shifts into like a different gear. And exactly. It's gonna become and so that's easy. why one of the best routines to like stay lean. Like when I did that bacon cucumber routine, when I dry fasted all day like that, I felt good. And the thing is like my skin, like pretty much how I feel now, it was a good routine. The only thing that routine lacked was glucose. Mm -hmm. So like, that's a good routine. If you were going to like, this is better though. Carb loading, actually carb loading and cutting carbs completely on the days that you don't have carbs is better than that. But that worked really good. I was training really hard too. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 yeah, like the optimal kind of cycle would be incorporating every everything that we talked about, like like that's right. longer, longer fasts, having uh, OMAD fasts, then having yeah. uh, carb loads, and then having dry fasts, and kind of cycling back and forth with all these. So, so this is actually so. You want to hear my exact routine right now? Sure, let's go. Basically, what I've been doing, like I'm just maintaining right now because I'm actually trying to like build a little bit of muscle because I've just been fasting. So God, I've been fasting so hard. This is the first time in two years that I'm actually like, you know what I mean? Not going to do a long fast. Like I've maintained, mm. but I haven't been able to make a gain in two years because I've just been fasting so hard, which is pretty amazing. Some of the long fasts I've done were pretty radical. Like I went 10 days on salt water and followed it up with a five day dry fast, lost 35 pounds in 15 days. <laughs> wow. And that was only like, that was only three weeks ago, man. Like, oh, yeah, and I recovered. Go ahead. That was your, uh, the, the weight loss transformation or. Yeah, that one. So yeah, I like fast. That was a nasty one. Like I, that one took me a little bit to recover from, but now I feel great. But so my routine now is just like what you said. I put everything into it. So I carb up on Saturday and Sunday right now. I just pretty much go with like sweet potato, rice, like just glucose, right? A little bit of fruit, maybe some berries. And then I eat like lean cuts of steak. I'm not a real big fan of chicken breasts, but the main thing is you want to go with a really lean cut of meat. And I usually try to hit uh, about one to one and a half grams per pound protein body weight. So I'm trying to hit about, you know, maybe, I, I don't even care if I even hit 200 grams to be honest, because the other thing, when you fast as hard as I do, your body is very protein sensitive. So that's another thing. That's another old school cycling practice that some of these like multiple meal a day guys would do. They'd actually cut protein for one full day out of the week, but you don't need to do that shit when you fast all day. You're yeah. just always sensitive. Exactly. So yeah. So I carb up on the weekend, one meal a day at night, drink a pile of water. And then Monday I go straight zero carb carnivore, one meal. And what I do though is I try to dry fast the whole way. So I try to, I dry fast unless I'm dying in the gym. So I try to train earlier in the day and then I'll stretch that dry fast out to the evening and then I'll eat on a dry stomach. We should hit this point. I always eat on a dry stomach and I don't drink any water afterwards for at least an hour or two because it keeps your HC, it keeps your stomach acidity nice and low, your HCL levels nice and high. 
and that makes us digest food way better because that's one of the biggest problems with the mainstream population is their stomachs are fucked. Yeah. So I drive fast the whole way, eat my meal at night, Tuesday, same thing, drive fast. Tuesday is the day I decide if I want to maybe try cutting some calories and I might drop it down to maybe 2000 calories, like, you know, and still hit my protein count, just cut the fat back. And then depending on how I feel, I'll carb up on Wednesday, but that one's not as aggressive. So I might hit like 300 grams of carbs. Like, but that one, I'll just hit maintenance calories. Like I, I, I might overeat slightly on the weekend by maybe like, you know, a thousand, it doesn't really matter. Like maybe a thousand calories over on the full like total, like maybe over 500 on each days. Mm-hmm. And then so, so Wednesday, I'll drive fast all day, train, carb up that night, lean meat, no fat, or as low as fat as I can, whatever's in the steak, like nothing, like maybe seven grams of fat for a hundred gram serving. Then Thursday, train, carnivore refeed, but dry fast all day. Friday, I do the same. And then Saturday is my last day of the week where I train. And then I take Sunday off and I carb up Saturday and Sunday. That's my exact routine right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it sounds ridiculous. And if I was gonna, and if I was gonna turn that into a cutting routine, um, what I would probably do because I'm doing a six day. Now you want to kind of work it around your training schedule, right? So right now I got, if I'm, if I want to cut, I'd probably only carb up on Sunday and Wednesday. And I wouldn't carb up Saturday night. The reason I do like, like, you know, that would be kind of like a little trick just to cut a little bit. It'd be just a, a little slow, a little bit of a slower cut. Because then I'm getting a carb load and three workouts in, a carb load and three workouts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then, like, go ahead. The, the carb loads are going to help you kind of train harder and that's going to transition over to more gains and more fat loss as well. And that's the thing. So, like, I know some of these guys on YouTube talking about the carnivore diet and shit and their strength. I do not fucking care what they <laughs> say. You are not, as, not even close, not even close to as explosive. And the problem with that, is if you can't lift as much weight in the gym, then you're not going to make the gains. Yeah. Because you can't you can't stress your body enough. Like when I'm when I was on straight carnivore, like I did it. That's how I know. And it just felt just like when I was on strict keto back in the day. I felt good. Your sleep is great. Everything is great. But you are flat. Hmm. And you do not have the strength. Like here, you know what the difference is? It's like okay, I'll tell you the difference. So obviously, I just got done that long fast. It taxed me a bit. But at the start, what was it? The week before last week. So we, it's Sunday now. So like not, so not last week, but just at the end of, of the week before. I bench pressed. Like I was doing still a full body. or No, I, I started the split routine. Anyway, I bench pressed 225 pounds for 10 strict pauses. Mm-hmm. Okay. And that was pretty much all I had. Like that was me on zero carb carnivore. Mind you, I came off that long fast. Mm -hmm. Two days ago, I bench pressed 225 for five sets of 10. Mm -hmm. Like that's the difference. Like it's unbelievable. Even my deadlifts. Like, so I actually deadlifted like, I don't know. I I was doing full body on that, on that 15 day fast. And I trained right up to day 10. And then when I started the dry fast, <clears throat> I cut the training. But even my deadlifts now, like I pulled 315 pounds for a five by 10 yesterday. Mm-hmm. Like I, that would have killed me like a week and a half ago on zero carb. For sure. What are, what are your uh, records? In terms of, <coughs> like you're still fasting, but you're still able to lift some heavy weights. So what are your like numbers? Uh, so that one fast when I told you that I did that experiment, when I went eight days on the salt water, when I very first figured this stuff out, I bench pressed 315 pounds for two double or three double pauses at five days fasted mm. at 170, at 174 pound body weight. Mm. So like that's, and that was me like not probably training as like, as like, specific as strict as i should have been going up into that that's pretty damn good for sure yeah. and that was on that was on the fifth day of not eating i still hit that weight and the only i only lost i lost a rep mm-hmm. which is quite a bit but like 
that's not bad for considering. So say I could hit like, you know, three triple pauses on Monday carved up. And then I still hit three double pauses on like, you know, Friday. That's pretty damn good. Yeah, yeah, it's it's uh, it's it, considering yeah, like that you trained before that and uh, you haven't eaten anything, so yeah, and I also trained all the days leading up to that bench press day. I still squatted yeah. and deadlifted all the days before that. Yeah, it's crazy. Like your, your body, well, it's, it, human it's body, man. The human body is amazing, but this is where it comes back to the fear, and people are scared to experiment. Where I just like, I love like I like uh, like the fear drives me, you know. Mm. Like even, you know, a lot of these guys like basically eating a lot of rotten meat and things on the internet now, <laughs> like it's not too popular yet, <laughs> but like the fermented meat, like yeah. I got like meat on my count, like on my shelf right now. That's like, it's liver, it's lamb liver. And I just bought a jar and I've been editing it out like every like two days and it's not even in the fridge, man. It's on the shelf and I'm going to get it. I'm going to let it get like, like rotten and <laughs> It's gonna, you know, pre pre digest it in a sense that the fermentation and the bacteria are gonna exactly. make it more easily digestible for you as well. Yeah, well, you've heard about high meat, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like the Eskimos used to. You know how they figured out how good it was for them? Yeah, well, no. Well, what they did is back in the day they had like dog sleds, right? <laughs> and they they gave the dogs a bunch of rotten meat versus the fresh fish. And they would go like twice as long wow. on, the, on the fermented rotten meat. And so then they're like, well, we should try this. And that's when they started burying that meat, that high meat, they'd bury it in the ground. And they would basically wait till it got so stinky that they could smell it like a mile downwind. And they'd just be drooling over this and they'd do it right before winter mm. because it'd give them like this crazy head of like natural, like probiotic. Yeah. Yeah. So, but that's, that's, that's go all, ahead. That's one of the aspects of ha having like, how influential the gut health is and how the microbiome influences your everything exactly. your health and uh, your strength and everything so the, and that's, so the reason why they got so, that big of an energy boost might have not have been because of the meat it was because of the bacteria and the, true 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 yeah it's like happy gut makes that like what is it like like that whole happy gut healthy mind like your gut health is number one and that's why no matter what anybody says i will never promote coffee even though I know because of like hormesis and the hormetic response, like I know somebody could go like eat a couple of coffee beans, but it's just too much, you know, and nobody can limit it because it's just too much of an addiction. For sure. It's not something people can control. Right. And that's why I had a guy tonight. Same thing. It's the old, same old story. You know, like you've probably seen this where people are like, Oh, I can't gain any weight. My metabolism so fucking fast. I can't gain any weight no matter how much I eat. So first I ask them how much do they eat? And then they're actually eating a lot. And I'm like, well, how much do you shit? And they're like, I shit like four times a day. Well, I'm like, your gut's fucked. That's why they can't gain any weight because they don't absorb, <clears throat> they don't absorb anything. And that is gut health 101. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, like, like, It doesn't matter what you eat. It matters what you absorb in a sense. Yeah. Like it's actually, it's actually a healthy thing to be able to gain a quick 20 pounds. It's actually healthy. Like I can put on, say if I was eating a meal a day and like in a tight window an hour and I could just eat as much food as I could get in a bunch of carbs, I will literally get up as heavy as maybe a buck 90 hmm. and I will plateau. I will not gain a pound over a buck 90. And it's really interesting because I was watching a guy on YouTube. I forget his name. He was talking about body fat and it was a good point. Most people have like kind of a window from when they're extremely lean to when they're like carrying like a little extra fat. And let's say it's like about 20 pound window. But once you get a, to a certain weight, what happens is that's when you start putting pressure on your system. So now your body can, your, you have like your body fat cells can store a certain amount of like glycerol and fatty, free fatty acids or fatty acids. But then when you get to this point where you're like going past that and you're, especially if you're doing it quickly, you'll put pressure on your system. And that is exactly when your blood triglycerides will start going through the roof. Hmm. Yeah. So you can be very healthy with an extra 20 pounds. And you know what, when I just did that last experiment, I don't know if you're following me, but I got fat deliberately for about six weeks there. 
And I was just eating, like, I was still trying to fast as much as I could. I was probably eating, like, on an eight-hour window. I was eating a lot, though. I was eating just garbage. Like, I was eating fucking McDonald's and dates. Because mm -hmm. McDonald's was easy to get in, right? I just wanted to get the experiment over with. I just wanted to get, like, gain the weight. Perfect macro is McDonald's. Like, you got carbs, fat, and, and protein. Like, how perfect is that to get yeah. fat? Perfect macro. So, <laughs> Yeah. So anyway, I got up, I think when I got up to about a buck 90, because I know my body so well from doing all these experiments, I got up to about a buck 90 and I felt good. And then as soon as I started creeping up over that, like started getting some chest pressure, fucking started getting like a little bit of like some, you know, maybe it was just from the bread and t some toxins in there and maybe the gluten or something, but I was getting some bumps on my arm. You know, I, my, mm. my health just really started to suffer. Yeah. To put on that extra 13, four, I, I think I got as heavy as 206. Mm -hmm. It's really interesting how, and that's why like, you no, know, like even like sumo wrestlers, you know, these guys, like they fast, you know, like I was pretty much trying to eat like a sumo wrestler when I was gaining the weight yeah. because I didn't, I wanted to still keep myself insulin sensitive. So I didn't ever want to go to where I was eating meals throughout the whole day Yeah, because I wanted to ha at least be half-assed healthy. But what I would do is I would get up in the morning. I would train fasted. Soon as I was done training, I would go straight to McDonald's and eat like literally like 50 bucks worth of McDonald's. I'd eat like six burgers, right? Mm -hmm. Like the big, like, like four or five or like quarter pounders, double quarter pounders and like a couple Angus burgers. Then I'd go straight home, have a nap, just like a sumo wrestler, exact same. Mm. And then I'd get up after the nap. And then I'd pound back a bunch of dates, like get even more and more fructose to try to get fat. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's a, like a, it's a healthier thing to kind of lose the fat fast as well to not get it stuck in the, the higher, higher uh, stable balance of a higher body fat in a sense to not get used to the higher body fat right. and get back into a leaner state. And that's, and that's a good, that's a good point because so gaining fat really quick is, is really bad for you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> now losing fat really quick is the best thing that could happen because your mind is very powerful. So like just losing weight quickly is going to put you in a good state of mind because you're happy and motivated. Yeah. Yeah. So even, you know what I'm saying? But like, you know, what's really cool is actually it's crazy. Another thing was blood tests, fuck blood tests. <laughs> so these guys went to the doctors that I was helping and he's like, cool. It was like, my cholesterol is like really high. And he hadn't eaten for like seven days. And I'm like, no shit. Yeah. It's like your body's breaking down so much body fat that it's like your own cholesterol. Yeah, exactly. It's amazing. And that is exactly the only fucking reason that vegans can pull off their stupid diet for any time at all. Their body fat saves them. Soon mm -hmm. as they get lean, their liver runs out of all the minerals. They run out of that friggin' precious body fat that carried their ass. They have no cholesterol and that's when their fucking brain starts shrinking. Yeah. So, and it's, yeah, like even if you, yeah, you're, if you're fasting, then your cholesterol and LDL may rise because you're burning body fat. And if you eat a bunch of saturated fat and things like that, then your cholesterol may actually drop because of that, that you're, you know, exactly. you're not compensating for it. Exactly. Because if you, as soon as you eat it, actually put the brakes on the fat burn. Yeah. But really, regardless, the whole point there was is that like high cholesterol just doesn't mean a fucking thing. You want your cholesterol, like I want my cholesterol like sky high. Now, don't get me wrong, your average fat ass that goes to the doctor that's been eating bread and sugar and everything, you know, and their cholesterol is through the roof and their triglycerides are through the roof. Like that's all just bad. Yeah. But it's not the cholesterol. It's the fucking. It's it's your fucking pig. Right? Yeah. It's you know you gotta lose. You gotta also, like. The the, <laughs> the atherosclerosis is also caused by like the inflammation and the inflammation exactly. is caused by carbs and sugars and cholesterol is gonna go there and try to heal that uh, those scarring in the arteries. Actually, I've actually talked about that a lot. And actually, you know what? Yeah. The worst, biggest cause of inflammation under the sun is insulin. Yeah. Like insulin itself is like it's the sugar and it's the sugar obviously having high blood sugar constantly is going to obviously flare your freaking arteries up and shit. Basically it's like you got crazy high blood sugar. Like you don't need to be like a rocket scientist to fucking figure this shit out when you got sure. blood sugar that's so high that you literally have syrup in your veins. Of course it's not going to be healthy, you know? And then you got like your insulin's high all the time 
and then you got that causes crazy amounts of inflammation. So as soon as you fast and dropping your insulin down to rock bottom, like that's how that's how you actually can reverse type one diabetes. Believe it or not, it just takes a a lot more time depending how bad the case was. Because most people that have type one diabetes were following a mainstream lifestyle, no fasting, eating lots of sh shit. And then they usually, it's an autoimmune problem that was caused by some sort of stress, like somebody died or something like that. And then they're essentially their pancreas stopped produ or started producing less insulin. Their, their pancreas is getting attacked by their immune system, their beta cells. And then one day they end up actually getting dehydrated. And then they're, because their blood sugar gets past this threshold, there's like a threshold to where your blood sugar, if it gets to a certain level, you'll start pissing like a racehorse because the last line of defense is your kidneys to get rid of the blood sugar. So you'll start pissing and these people don't know that they're, they're fucked up yet. Then they get dehydrated, end up with ketoacidosis, diabetic keys, ketoacidosis, they end up in the hospital. And then guess what they do? They fucking be like, oh, you're type one, put you on the fucking insulin. And I've had people that came to me, they got diagnosed type one. Within a week, I had them off insulin. Yeah, it's crazy. It's un, that's like, I think that's almost one of the biggest, because technically they're just killing the person with the insulin. Yeah, it's, it's it, like, it doesn't make sense from a mechanistic perspective as well to give, to give diabetics like insulin to cause them raise the, the, the insulin even higher. Where, whereas, you know, the, the issue is that the, the, they, they have like blood sugar that is high, but you can drop the blood sugar with simply fasting and eating low carb and exactly. you know, av avoiding the insulin spike in the first place because that, that additional insulin spike is still going to cause more issues and more uh, insulin resistance. And, and, you know, and that's the same thing. And that's why, that's what, you know, they always just treat the fucking symptoms, right? Yeah. That's why some of these crazy diets, like well, the people don't even really fast, just like, you know, like, you know, like the bacon experiment mm. or like any of these diets that seem really crazy. Fuck eating bacon all day. That's 20 times healthier than freaking. If you cut, like, if you're going carb, yeah. zero carb, you're going to get so much better results, even without fasting. You combine straight bacon with fasting and add a little bit of lemon juice in there just to make sure you're covering your vitamin C. You're laughing. Yeah, yeah. It's so, it's so crazy. Yeah, like fasting is really almost like, uh, you know, covers almost every aspect of uh, health and uh, longevity in, in terms of like nutrition. And a lot of a lot of you know research is showing that you know, one of the one of the surest ways of prolonging lifespan is to do like semi caloric restriction, uh, but you know that caloric restriction isn't necessarily the key. The key is to go into autophagy and to uh, yeah, like re like caloric stoppage they should call it. Yeah, because like you, not you, not you, just cutting calories. Caloric stoppage is what it should yeah, be called. Yeah, yeah. You you can <laughs> eat you can eat like very few calories and uh, starve yourself but if you're not doing fasting then you're not doing anything good for your longevity either because you're not going going into autophagy and uh, you're not you know recycling the old worn out cells yeah like even like now that you just mentioned that even you know the worst like for your viewers to hear this the worst possible way under the in the like under the sun to lose weight is going to be trying to lose weight on a high frequency eating routine through cutting calories and ha eating carbs. Yeah. That's gonna be the worst. So basically that exact diet is a bikini, a mainstream bikini competitor that's trying to lose fucking weight for a show. And that is why only the only people that can keep muscle on because it's extremely catabolic, the only people that can keep muscle on is people that are on steroids that are running that style. Now the people, if they're in a bulking phase, they can get away with it because they're not trying to cut, except it's still gonna be unhealthy as fuck because they're spiking their insulin all day. Yeah. But they don't give a shit though about health. They just need, they just want, they, yeah. they're taking insulin and growth hormone anyway. It doesn't matter if they're low on any of it. Yeah. And <laughs> if, if, even if you are trying to bulk, you should still add some intermittent fasting for the health. Oh, for sure. Yeah. That's, see, that's the one thing with those guys. Now, that's the thing. You see, they want to be in an anabolic state 24 7. So it all comes back to if you're trying to, if you're trying to run an unnatural, uh, muscle mass, like if you're trying to run an unnatural body composition via mm -hmm. massive amounts of muscle mass, you have to run an unnatural way of eating. It's, For sure. Like there's no way that Eddie Hall, like, you know, or like Brad Shaw, like some of these strong men, 
-hmm. If they went to, if they even tried fasting, they're just going to lose weight. And they're, then they're not going to be as, they, there's no way they could maintain a 400 pound body. Yeah. Like now the sumo wrestlers, see, that's where the sumo wrestlers, <clears throat> they fast, <clears throat> but it's like just in the morning before their workout or during their fasted workout. But it's still healthier than what those strong men are doing. That's why Eddie Hall had to basically retire. I think he would have died if he would have kept doing it. For sure. For you sure. know? And so the whole point is with those big bodybuilders that aren't natural, basically you, you can hit your genetic potential as a natural through a fasting focused lifestyle where you're eating, say you're really lean eating one meal a day, you could definitely hit your genetic potential. Sure. But, right? But the guy that's on the gear, there's no fucking way he's going to hit his geared up potential with a hardcore fasting regimen. It'll work really good for him to cut, but there's no way he could get as big as he would get because he just needs so much insulin and so much fucking food that they don't even care about their health, though. That's what they give up. They give up their health, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You don't, you don't want to be anabolic, so to say, all the time and throughout the day either, even if you're natural. Like exactly. Eating, eating three meals a day with highly anabolic foods like high carbs and high protein, spiking insulin is still going to, you know, be detrimental for your longevity and life in time it'll because, tax yeah. your system in yeah. time it'll tax your system plus as a natural funny thing is you'll actually be more anabolic in the long term because you're keeping your insulin sensitivity so high and you're cranking up your gh and you're cranking up your testosterone so even if you're trying to bulk on a six meal a day diet as a natural you will never get the results you would get when you're fasting and trying to pack all that food in a tight window yeah, for sure. Exactly. And, you know, the, like the, you, you can say the argument that fasting is actually the normal in a sense that evolutionarily we're more. Oh, that's what, yeah. We're more adapted like that's what you, to you're less, saying. less eating frequency and uh, having these more frequent meals is unnatural, definitely. Yeah. And that's what you were saying before. I was going to say that, that when you said fasting basically is the, you know, fits all for everybody health, like benefit, beneficiary or benefit, whatever you want to say there basically we evolved we evolved to fast yeah so it's like something that we should all do for optimal human health now here's a good point though before i get off lose this thought so the carnivore diet so let's say we're leading a meal a day routine and i'm eating zero carb carnivore now when we're talking about genetic potential let's say doing like a carb cycling routine i put on like some muscle okay and I'm doing like my meal a day, carb cycling on the weekends and maybe throwing in the carb load on the Wednesday, just like what I do. If I went from that style of eating routine back to like a full time zero carb carnivore, I will actually lose muscle. The reason is that carnivore root routine will not sustain the gains I made on that other routine. Hmm. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Like you're going to lose... It, I won't lose it quick, yeah. but I will eventually lose my progress that I get from that. That's a better, I don't know, that's a better diet when you're carb For sure. cycling. For sure. So I, I would actually lose progress if I stayed on a carnivore routine for long enough. Mm -hmm. Because of what you said too about just losing strength and I wouldn't be able to put out in the gym. And that's the way. And the same idea is if, if you took like a, somebody on steroids, you know, and you take them off their crazy ass multiple meal a day bulking diet and when they're and also obviously see their whole lifestyle supporting this massive anabolic swing so you you take them off all the drugs and everything obviously their potential just drops like a rock same okay. similar idea but the carnivore diet versus carb loading you're just never ever ever gonna have the performance when it comes to s explosive performance not eating carbs it's impossible for sure yeah like once you take out the stimulus which would be like either anabolic steroids or lifting yeah. bodybuilding style, then you're going to lose the, the, the response as well, or the effect, exactly. the fluffiness in a sense. Yeah. And like that in the thing, you know, and like, yeah, like I, I wish, like, I wish I could, I could get those results eating like zero carb yeah. carnivore keto style eating. I like that. Yeah. Like I feel light, I feel clear headed, but I try, I've tried so many, it just doesn't work. <laughs> I like, yeah. especially like, it does not work. I like you know like what's his name there. I listen to some some of his stuff. He's knows his shit, 
like Sean Baker. But the problem is, is a lot of the stuff he's set records and all this was like from the past for one. But not even that. He's such a carnivore advocate now that he's so it's involved. in his best interest to always be promoting that. There's no fucking way he could ever do a carb loading routine. Yeah. Well, he could. See, that's where I'm like he flexible. Should, <laughs> he should try it out and not be get not get tied up with with you know creating his whole entire identity around exactly. Because all I'm looking for is the truth and what's what the. There's, like you said, there's always a fasting routine and a macro routine for everybody. And I pretty much dumbed it down that the best routine for pretty much everybody to heal is going to be a zero carb carnivore routine with like, like crazy amounts of prolonged fasting. And then once you're healthy, the best routine is going to be a carb cycling routine. Yeah, for sure. Exactly. That's that simple, you know, like, yeah, we so, can, yeah, we, we can, uh, we've been talking a, lo a long time now and we can tie it up and in a sense, it's a good point to end. Uh, but before we do that, like, uh, I want to ask, like, where, where would you like to plan on taking the snake diet uh, movement? You have like a huge Facebook group. Yeah. How, how are you going to plan to so, that influence? So end of the day, like I just, I think if you want to, like, if it's about me, as far as like my goal and what I want, I want to just, I fucking hate the system, man. Like I've dealt with the system. You know, I had skin issues when I was a kid. I've dealt with doctors. I had fucking like allergy shots and all this, all this bullshit, you know? And I just want people to wake up and, and I think end of the day, if you can solve the obesity epidemic, I want to solve the fucking obesity epidemic. Mm. I want people to be fearless to fast. That way we're not such pigs and we're not soaking up all these natural resources. Then these vegans can stop bitching because the obesity epidemic's the problem, mm. right? It's not, it's not the meat. Like, by on a side note, too, there's not one study that actually is like isolates meat, it's always meat and a bunch of other shit, meat, and right? <laughs> yeah, like, fuck these vegans, make that. but yeah, I want to I want to solve the obesity epidemic, and I feel that that would just make the world a better place in every aspect because people, you know, that are unhealthy, health is number one. You need if you don't focus always on your health, you're just not going to go down the right road, and I tell people this that are stressing about a job or a relationship or something. I'm like, as long as you focus on your health and you become the best version of yourself health wise and, you know, confidence, all the other stuff, spirit, like, you know, mentally, everything just works out. I can't explain it. It just works out. Mm -hmm. And so that's my goal. I just want to, I just want to solve the obesity epidemic and just get rid of these fucking scam artists. And, you know, I, I can't stand big pharma. Like, I think right now already, I probably cost Big Pharma like millions of dollars a year already. Yeah. Like, I, the amount of people I get off diabetes meds and shit is just phenomenal. Like, it's ridiculous. How, how many results are you getting per day, in a sense? Oh, fuck. Like, oh, yeah, if your viewers want to check my stuff out, so I'm the snake diet wizard on Instagram. So there's just, it's like result after result after result. Like, this shit is so easy that I have people that just watch my YouTube videos. And then they take pictures and then like a month later, they send me pictures where they like, they've lost 30 pounds and I didn't even talk to them. <laughs> yeah. And then crazy. also like I coach people for free over voice memo on Facebook. Like my, but like, I'm like, same with you. Like I'm obviously pretty radical on my channel, but you know, like, you know, YouTube censoring the fuck out of me. Like they don't, they won't let me do live videos now. And, and like, I got two Facebook pages that are almost at 5,000 people on both of them. Hmm. and one of them's almost always blocked so i gotta alternate between the two you know like i, I have all sorts of issues your facebook, facebook group is like three hundred thousand members yeah it's, it's, yeah it's a little over three hundred thousand now but even there i was getting censored like they wouldn't yeah. let me add people to the group like but yeah like anybody that wants to know how to lose weight check out my stuff it's weight loss is a fucking joke you don't need to spend a dime don't ever get suckered into any bullshit if you want to get a good fitness trainer that's a whole nother story but as far as just the weight goes all you need to do is stop eating and drink fucking salt water <laughs> yeah, that's, that's that's true and fast fast your ass off that's right yeah and my yeah really enjoy talking with you and uh well, thanks, my, man. my last my last question is like what what would be this one single piece of advice or a habit that you wish you adopted sooner that improved your body and your mind um well, obviously, when I first started fasting, right, that was the biggest thing. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking so. Right, the fasting pretty much cured any skin issues I had for years. Just, and then I real, I had, it's all about control. 
It's so fasting gives you full control of your, as far as weight goes, it gives you full control. Another thing I'd recommend for people that want to like lose weight is accountability is key via pictures like and measurements. Okay. But pictures, you want to take a wicked set of starting pictures and you want to take them every seven days and don't compare yourself to fucking Instagram models because it's fake as fuck. All of you people need to worry about, is take a set of pictures and every seven days try to improve on your last the way you look in your last set and that is the best way to make progress and then if you're fasting you know tell the people in your social circle right away so like people just it's fear you got to be yeah. able to tell people to fuck off you got to be able to tell people this is what i'm doing you're not going to change it yeah. and that is probably the biggest issues i deal with is that fear of judgment yeah, other, so people, you, other people should also fast in a sense of that you get motivated. Exactly, right? you can't you can't let anybody like control your life because nobody really gives a shit about your life other than you, hmm. right? So, but uh, like that just to wrap that up. So like the fasting, and then obviously, you know, there's there's just even like my training frequency, um, just going back more to like the natural lifestyle in every way I almost can. Like probably one of the biggest things is like my backstory, like I don't want to get into it, but like I do live like a very like simple life. Like I deliberately actually try to almost be poor, financially poor, but like I don't have to be like, you know, there's a lot of people that want to like pay me money to coach them, but I won't go down that road because I feel that I can help a lot more people and I just always help people for free. And when I do, and instead of letting them pay me, I make them do accountability pictures for free help and post them on that big group in front of 300,000 people, because that is so good when people take those pictures and it gives them that slap upside the head feedback and they post them on that big group. That is so key to starting on a fat loss journey and it makes you stick to it. And that's, for sure. that's what I do that nobody else does. And I can do it because nobody's paying me anything. So people, because they haven't paid me a dime, they don't have me by the balls. I can make them do whatever the fuck I want. And that's why I get such, that's why I get such wicked fat loss results. Yeah. Wow. That's yeah, truly amazing. And, uh, and I, I believe that a lot of people will definitely get a lot of valuable information about fasting and, you know, motivation, everything from your channels. So yeah, cool. Uh, thanks for coming on the podcast and uh, looking forward to more of the crazy transformations and uh, we'll probably talk in the future again. Well, thanks, Sam. You have a great night. Yeah, I'll see you around. Bye. Snake Diet is a prolonged fasting focused lifestyle. You fast as long as you can. Not hours, but days, weeks, and months. If you're fat, you don't need to eat, drink water, and all right that's it for this episode make sure you leave us a review on itunes or the other podcast applications that you may use definitely share the video on youtube check out cole's facebook group and youtube channel but other than that thanks for listening my name is seem stay tuned for the next episode stay empowered